All right, welcome back, guys, to the yep. Fallen Sanctum show. Uh, part two of this Final Fantasy. Uh, cracking, pr cracking. There you go. Uh, so we're gonna be we're gonna be saying what cards we got. We're and... not gonna be comparing legends because there's no. <laughs> Stop being. <that. laughs> okay, so we're gonna go all the way from commons from the foils uh, from the. Uh, Foil section, and then we're gonna go all the way to the legendary and to legends. So, I'm gonna start first since I have less common foils. So the only common foil was Liberatus. I'm gonna say what he does since we didn't really do that type of content while we were while we were cracking. So at least this gives you the opportunity in what we crack. So this is Liberatus, and his effect is when uh, Liberatus enters the 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 field, choose one for uh, category Final Fantasy 15 character in your break zone, add it to your hand. If it's a card Nexus, select up to two backups, activate them. So basically, you play this, you add a category 13, and then if it's Nex instead, you're basically activating two, two forward. So basically, instead of being a, a uh, five, uh, five cost, it would be technically a three cost since you're undoing your, back, uh, undoing your backups. I'm going to explain all the rulings later. So what did you get on your side for your comment section for your foils? I got a foil to uh, see... Tsuki Tsukinoa. Uh, so uh, basically, when she enters the field, I choose up to the same number of characters I control that have job ninja or card name ninja uh, that I control and activate them. Okay. Uh, and uh, I can, I don't know, green symbol. Uh, Tsukinoa gains uh, cannot be blocked by forward of cost five or more until end of the turn. Um, Maybe you might poke him to death with that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you have several. Ah, take one damage, and I pass my turn. Yeah. Uh, and then I have Tom Betty. Uh, so the uh, the card uh, the card named Mira gains two thousand power, and when Tom Betty is uh, put from the field into the break zone, I draw a card. Nice. I have Monk, a full art version of the Monk, though. Yeah, they tend to have. That's actually worth money. Like yeah. even though it says common, it's actually probably like a sounds good. So you can card. do yellow symbol plus tap to put monk into the break zone. You choose a forward and you deal three thousand damage to it for each monk, uh, for each job monk or card name monk you have. Wow, that's actually really strong. Uh, I have thief. When he enters the field, I reveal my top deck until I find an earth or lightning unit and put it into my hand. Um, and then I shuffle the rest of the cards back. And then I have crow. Uh, when crows put from the field into the break zone, I choose one forward in my break zone. I add it to my hand, and I can tap. Uh, I can tap to put crow into the break zone, uh, to choose one forward and dull it. So I it's a two for one skill, which is kind of nice. Yeah. So I can so kill, I can kill, one kill one him, and I plus and I dull you. Uh, those so, those were all my common foils. So I'm gonna go into my rare foil. So I only got one in this pack. Mm. So you're gonna be noticing that I got, I'm gonna be talking more later on. So this is Rude, as you know us over here, and I'll explain. I'll read his ability out loud. So if you control a Rufus, Rude gains 300 power. If you control a member a uh, member of the text other than Rude, Rude gains first strike. So it's like a four gains like a extra ability and you can be 10k for three three power if you have rufus on the field which is really strong so this is so, uh, rare and i'll put it back yeah here. i only pulled one foil rare uh so i am not going to be talking much once we get the legends uh <laughs> but uh i have a few heroes uh so i pulled a foil dandrine uh so dandrine uh when an ice character other than dandrine enters the field i put a monster counter on him uh, at one monster counter, he has the effect that I can put him into the break zone, choose one forward and dull it. At two, um, no, at three, yeah, at three, uh, at three or more monster counters, uh, I can put him into the break zone to choose two forwards, dull them, and freeze them, but that's only if I have three, uh, three monster counters on the entrance. So yeah, it's like playing walkers to an extent. So we're going to go to the regular heroes and then we'll do our four. Planeswalkers with ETBs though. Yeah. So we're going to do uh, the heroes first on, that, that, on that. the non-foil side first since we get a lot more on that. And then we're going to do the foil side for heroes. And then we'll do legends last. So you want me to start first, uh, Lucas? Go ahead, buddy. Okay. So remember the other card I got, Libertis. So I, this is Nyx, actually. So I'm going to show you. I got two of these suckers. So it was really good with that combo card that we saw earlier with this guy. So I'll read this guy, Nexus effect. So when Nexus enters its field, put one job uh, king grave you control into the break zone. When you choose, uh, when you do so, uh, 
Oh, yeah, you can. Okay, wait. When next answer put a one job grave, you control into the break zone. When you do so, choose one forward, break it. Okay. When a uh, when a job king grave other than next you control is put from the field into the break zone, select one of the following two two actions. Uh, next gains haste until the end of the turn. Choose one forward and dollar. So basically, you can crack the dude, play him. So the king king Lubris would die. And then after that, you can you would probably be able to use haste or dollar in the forward. So basically, free smack or you know let your other creature uh, other forwards do that. And for for a hero card, it's a really strong combination. So you're basically sacrificing a creature uh, a forward to be able to smack the opponent. So let's put that there. And that's why with Liberdus, you pay your three, put your forward, and it becomes a very strong combo. All right. So. Ozer is my other one, and he's from Final Fantasy VI, and his effect is when Ozer enters a field, choose one forward of cost two or less, uh, your opponent control, you gain control. Wow, this is a very strong effect, but probably pricey. You don't normally, I don't remember having the uh, water doing that. And this is Chaos. There used to be another Chaos as a backup. When Chaos enters the field, choose one forward of five or more in your break zone, you may pay X. When you do, if the X, if it is the X cost, play it onto the field. Uh, remove Chaos from the game, choose one character or an opponent to control, remove it from the game. Wow, that's pretty good. For backup, it costs one and it has an additional effect. It's pretty impressive. So you pay one and then you're basically paying six to revive a creature. Then you can sack it to remove a character. The character's control, so this also targets backups too. All right, Barrett got a few of these from before. I also got a foil version, and I might as well show you it now since it's the same bloody card, so I don't want to review it a second time. So Barrett, deal 400 damage to all four to you control. That's pretty good. And then doll four, choose a doll four, break it. That's actually pretty good too. And then his ultimate is you discard himself, which is the ES, which is Igromao Max. Break all fours and monsters opponent controls. So it costs two, four, six. So it's basically eight. So it's very, very, very hard to pull off. So basically you're paying eight just to use like the full destruction effect. Two for his himself and then six for the rest of the effect. So I got Sabin as well. I also got him as foil. The one of my favorite Final Fantasy characters to play in the game. As you notice. Oh yeah, his effect. Until the end of the first turn, Sabin gains First strike and brave, saving deals one damage. Uh, deals one damage. Uh, you you receive one damage. You can only use the effect during uh, during your turn and once per turn. Once saving attacks, choose one four. Deal damage equal to saving's power. So this guy's a fucking beast, but he's also very risky because you're like, okay, I take a damage on top of my deck and then put it on that. So you if you have a good ex deck with this, this would be quite interesting. So. We also got Newt. So his effect is put Newt in the graveyard, uh, freeze and, uh, pay one, pay Newt, freeze and daw all backups your opponent control. You can use this ability during your turn if your opponent controls five or more backups. So that's a very interesting effect. Probably not that easy to pull off. Well, it's easy, but I wouldn't. it's not something I would recommend. Mm -hmm. So... Realm, another Final Fantasy VI character. When Realm enters the field, you may search for one monster cost of one and one monster cost of two and play them onto the field. At the end of each of your turn, choose one forward opponent controls. You may, if you control five or more monsters, return it to the hand. So basically, yeah. the more monsters you have, the the more often you can bounce stuff on the field. I don't know how many monsters we're going to have, but... We're going to probably see it in the comment section. Yeah. All right, so all my non-foil heroes have been done, and I also displayed some heroes that I had doubles of. Your turn. Sounds good. Uh, so me, uh, we already went. Did did we already do the get uh, whatever the the, the, the no? No, we didn't. But I also have one as well. So all right, so uh, yeah, the get whatever Sid. I'm just gonna call him Sid. Uh, so you can tap him, choose one monster I control, uh, select one counter placed on it, and place an additional counter of the same type. So I guess that's how you uh, yeah you put extra counters without like summoning more cards. Uh, then I have uh, we are we already did 
uh, half of the heroes I got, so I'm gonna put them in the back because there's no need to go over them anymore. <laughs> no. Uh, I've got Tilika. Well, uh, I got Tilika too, so that means. Uh, yeah. So uh, tap, the uh, tap Tilika. The costs required to play your characters onto the field this turn is reduced by one. It cannot become zero. It can only be used once per turn. So if you're making a big play, I have Marsh. Good. If you control two or more category Final Fantasy Tactics characters, uh, the cost for playing Marsh onto the battlefield uh, is reduced by two. She's a five drop, so she becomes a three drop. And when she enters the field, choose one cat choose one category Final Fantasy Tactics, a three or less in your break zone, and play it onto the field. So show the card, just so that people can see. It looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's a cute foil. And then last, well, I have, I have, you I know, Marsh is a dude, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, girl, I mean, I RPGs, you know they, they they all look the same anyways. I, I've, I've got, really look <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got I've got anima. Yeah, I mean unless they got titties like Tifa, bro, man, it ain't gonna change. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so when a forward opponent, uh, when when a forward opponent, okay, yeah, the grammar on this. When a forward an opponent controls is put from the field into the break zone, I choose one opponent, one forward an opponent controls, and I dull it. Jesus Christ, the, the, the grammar on this. And I can pay zero to choose a forward and opponent controls and deal a 2k damage. I can only use this ability once per turn. I've got Doned, another like mystery machine dude um, from Final Fantasy Tactics. When he enters the field, I can search a card named Marsh or Monster and add it to hand. And I can do green symbol plus tap. Green symbols win, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> put, <laughs> put drone into the break zone choose one tactics character and add it back to your hand uh, and last but not least yeah we already rent over all the other uh, heroes I have yeah those uh, are there you go so it's uh, back to you Emmanuel oh yeah so I mean hero won't we do you since you had less legends than I do alright so I have Ursula when Ursula enters the field I choose one job monk or card named Monk of cost two or less in the break zone. I play it onto the field. Uh, Ursula, for reference. She's kind of cute. Wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I put one job Monk or one. Uh, okay, so yeah, I play it onto the field, and then I put one. Uh, I can I can put one job Monk or card named Monk other than Ursula into the break zone to select one of the two following actions until the end of the turn. Ursula gains four thousand power and brave. Or I choose one. Uh, I choose one forward and deal it. Uh, deal it damage equal to Ursula's power. Dang. Yes. Yeah, crazy strong. And, and that's uh, all, right? Yes, yeah, that's, that's all I have. All right, so this is my non foil legendary. So it's, uh, was it Basil S from Final Fantasy 13? And I'll read the effect. So when Bathless enters the battle, uh, enters the field, choose up to two fours, opponents control, deal, uh, deal each of them. Damage equivalent to its pi uh, power minus two. So basically, if you have like a effect that does a thousand, you kill everyone. At the end of each of your opponent's turn, dull and freeze all the act uh, active backups your opponent controls. So that's a really strong effect for a cost four, especially a forward. So I wonder how Lucas is going to be able to survive this fucking asshole. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm working on a strategy right now. I don't know the card. He gets bonuses, I said, since he's a new to the game. So we got Braska's final era, Aeon. And his effect is when Braska's final Aeon attacks or is chosen by your opponent's uh, summon or abilities, uh, choose up to one uh, forward uh, one forward opponent controls, deal 10,000 damage. This damage cannot be reduced. Wow. He's seven, so he's fucking hard to play. Uh, discard Braska's final Aeon, choose one forward. It deals... 10,000 damage. You can use this ability if you control two or more drops, summoner, forward, and if if Braska's final, if Braska's final on is in your hand. Wait. So basically, uh, you have to have two forwards, and then you have to reveal this card in your hand from my understanding. Yo, that's a beast, man. He's seven, but he's probably freaking hard to play. But it's probably very hard to answer. You'd be like, oh, I do a thousand cards that protect. Try to be like, oh, you have to do a thousand and stuff. Nope, it doesn't work. And then we got the duel that I got. I believe they're full arts as well. So it's Cloud and Sephiroth. So I'll read the, the hero of the game, Cloud. 
So when Claude enters the field, you may search for one category seven and add it to your hand. That's really good. Uh, you pay three, remove the top seven cards of your deck from the game, choose a four, break it. You can use this ability during your main phase and only once during that turn. And yeah, 700 power. Uh, and at five damage, it becomes uh, 9,000, which is really strong afterwards. But seven is kind of on the lower curve. And then we've got the big boy Sephiroth. He's got a really interesting restriction. Basically, he says, fuck you. And because uh, either player has to have four damage each. So it's like when you can only play Sephiroth when, when either player has four da uh, damage, uh, four points of damage each or more. So that's really annoying. So you can't just search him and play him on the field. When Sephiroth enters the field, he basically says, ciao, kill a, kill a character and break it. His uh, ultimate attack, but I only have one in the deck, so I won't be able to use it. It's like uh, uh, Octo Slash. Choose one forward. Uh, choose one uh, choose one forward, up to one backup, and up to one monster. Remove them from the game. You can only use this ability if, if each player if each player has five damage or more. So basically, the first effect is Eater player, and this is like kind of like a late game, so it's like really fucking strong. So uh, people that love making stuff for up decks, you just like abuse the fuck out of them. So uh, this is what we got in our content on what we pulled on the higher rarities. We didn't do the comments on uh, rares because we'll probably be displaying that while we're playing against one another. So thank you very much for joining uh, joining us on what we pulled and everything. And I will be doing a rules video. Uh, we'll be doing a rules video so that there's no confusion. Thanks for coming to watch me get my ass beat in the next video. <laughs> Please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like me to recover. For each like, I recover yeah. one point of damage. <laughs> before the game starts so i'll have like extra shields to try and win the game because i'm so bad at this that i don't i don't think i could come out alive but anyways <laughs> thank you guys for watching and uh we're also going to be displaying the decks before we play against each other yeah sounds good all right well you guys take care all right peace peace uh, stop